Hi, and welcome back to the Calculus of Explanations, and the third video in our Circle Inversion series. I saw this problem on Presh Talwalker's excellent YouTube channel, Mind Your Decisions, and I couldn't resist giving you guys one more video in the series. I'll be going through it fairly quickly, so if you haven't seen the previous videos, please go and watch those to get the background. But if you stick around till the end, I'll show you how I normally solve these problems and an online tool that can help you get to grips with what Circle Inversion does and how to solve problems with it. Let's get into the problem. As you can see, we have these two semicircles down the bottom with radius 1, and we're trying to find the radius r of the central circle. The two curves on the outside are circular arcs centered at A and B. If you wanted to solve this using trigonometry, you could draw three lines as follows. If you want to see how this method works, I recommend watching Presh Talwalker's video on the subject. I'll leave a link in the description. To solve it using circle inversion, you have to decide which circle you're going to invert on. Eventually, I decided on using the circular arc centered at A, so I drew a circle like this. Now let's invert some of these objects. We have to note that down here we have a length of 4 since each semicircle has radius 1. If we look at the central point, which I'll label D, then we have to know where does this point invert to? Here it is, D dash. Using the formula for inversion, we can figure out that since D is a distance of 2 away from A, the point D dash must be a distance of 8 away from A, like so. So we know this semicircle inverts to a semicircle here of radius 4. The other semicircle goes through the origin, A, as does this circular arc, so they become parallel lines in the inverted space. The circle we're interested in, being tangent to all three, has to be tangent to all three in the inverted space. Draw this line through the origin and the middle of the circle we're interested in, and then draw these points. E and its inverted version E dash. Since this circle goes from the point D to the point D dash, we know that it has a diameter of 6, and therefore its distance from the origin or the point A is 10. So the distance from A to the point E is 8 over 5, and this will help us determine the radius of the circle R. R is just 4, the radius of the green circle, minus the distance from A to E, divided by 2. So, putting everything together, we get that the radius is 6 on 5. At this point, I'm sure some of you are wondering how I actually solve these sorts of problems. So to round out the series, I'd like to show you the tool I use to solve these circle inversion type problems to figure out you know, where to put the circle of inversion, which objects to invert, and so on. So this is GeoGebra, and we have a lot of different options here for different uh, geometrical shapes and such that we can make. Uh, specifically, if we come down here, we can create things like circles. So you have a lot of different options, but let me choose this one. So I can create a circle here with a center around there and a radius say of two uh, and you can see it gives us a circle and let's say we wanted to make a polygon like a square or something we could draw a regular polygon with four sides and now let's say you want to invert this square with respect to this circle so the one we're interested in if we come down even further under transform we have reflect about circle and this is circle inversion so if i click that it says select object to reflect and then the circle so let me select the polygon and then click on the circle and you can see we get the inverted shape so if i just click on this polygon now i can move it around and you can see the inverted form uh, outside the circle and of course i can drag this polygon outside the circle and get the inverted shape inside the circle. Great, so 
let me actually show you our problem now. So if I delete some of this and I'll just come over here, you can see I have the problem all set up. And we're going to draw a circle now to invert around. So let me draw a circle with a center at A and a radius of four. And I might actually color that green. And now we're going to invert some of these shapes. So we're going to click uh, on reflect about circle. And you can see I've got this arc here. I can invert to get the straight line. I can reflect this semicircle to get another one out here. And I should be able to click on this one and invert it as well, which you can see doesn't work. So there's something gone wrong with that one. And I figured out, you know, if we put a circle here, you know, an actual circle, not a semicircle, then that will work. So let me just come up here and I'll just invert that circle. And you can see it's the straight line uh, K dash here. So now clicking on our circle of interest, we're going to invert that one and we get the big circle there. So as you can see, this is really useful. Um, you know, I could move this circle about now and see how it changes. Um, but this is basically the setup I use to test different ideas, you know, figure out uh, some objects to invert around and see if I can get a setup where, you know, here I've squished the inverted circle between two parallel lines, um, which is really good. And then I just figure out uh, my various points from there. So hopefully you enjoyed this small uh, insight into how I solve the problems. And now whenever you see a problem, you can go ahead, jump into GeoGebra and have a go at solving it using inversion. Thanks so much. Um, I've really enjoyed making this series. And I'm, I'm hoping that you guys got something out of it. So let me know in the comments uh, if you've solved any problems recently using inversion um, or how some of this material has helped you. Thanks. And until next time, stay curious.